Hey guys, John here with week four of my Knife Making Tuesday adventures. Uh, that's where I get to take one day a week and focus completely on making my first custom knife. So this is the fourth week and this is build week. I'm machining the handles and I'm making uh, two sets of handles. One set's going to be a frame lock, one set's going to be a uh, button lock. Uh, they're both aluminum for now because aluminum's easier for me to machine. So uh, let's get right to it. I spent most of the morning and afternoon coating it up and now I'm ready to go. If you don't know a lot about machining, you might uh, be under the impression that it's um, just pushing a bunch of buttons and watching the machine work, and it's stupid easy. But that couldn't be farther from the truth, especially at this, uh, you know, this hobby level that I have. Um, it's so much running back and forth between my garage and my PC, and uh, you know, checking things, changing things, numbers here and there, all oh, numbers, numbers. And uh, I've always been pretty good at math, but um, this is a lot of numbers. <laughs> you don't have to be great at calculations, but you, that's what calculators are for. But anyway, so I'm making, this is going to be the handles for my knife. Um, this is the back side. These are where the bearings go. Actually, I've got them, a uh, big mess. Got them right here. So these are the bearings. They fit fine, which is great. Uh, and this is a relief for the button lock. Same for up there. Um, so I make this plate, and these holes are supposed to go through and be totally lined up. And as you can tell, those do not line up whatsoever. In machining world, that is stupidly off. Crazy off. Unacceptably off. So I had to figure out why that um, that problem happened. It took me a long time. I had to measure every single hole in my fixture plate to figure out why uh, they were pretty much 23 thousandths of an inch off to the left and down. And I finally figured out why. Um, and it all boiled down to this hole being in the wrong position. So I've, I've fixed it now and I'll make another one. And these holes are locator holes so that I can take these um, quarter inch stainless dowel pins and drop them in there and that way it'll locate perfectly into the fixture every time. Um, they fit now because I moved the plate over. But uh, notice they're exactly in the center line of the part so that I can flip it over and the center line is always going to be the same. So if this part is exactly 5 inches, or if it's 5.5, it doesn't matter, because my reference point is from here to here, right? So this distance, I don't know if that makes sense. Trust me, it's going to work. If my machine, if my programming knows that it's going to flip the part exactly on the center line, then this can be pretty much any length as long as it still fits. Because, um, you know, they shear this on the machine, so I ask for 5 inch, but I get 5.3 or something, 5.1, whatever, it's never totally consistent. But with this uh, dowel pin flippy system, it's going to work really good. So once I put the pins in, then I can flip it over, get those bearings out of the way. And basically, I uh, use the pins to da da da, and then I use my finger clamps and I clamp it down. It's gonna work great. So, that's a lot of talking for not a lot of results. Um, so, basically, I'm gonna make another one of these right now uh, with proper offsets and locations and stuff, and then there we go. Alright, let's check this guy out. See if I got it right this time. As far as I can tell from here, them holes are bang on. Try with the pins. There's a 
burr inside that one, so I don't expect it to really work. Mmm, homemade cookies. Yum. For making this one set of handles, I need 12 separate tools. Starting on the left is a chamfer, uh, chamfer drill mill to spot all the holes. And then several drill bits going up in sizes. Two reamers, a six millimeter and a quarter inch reamer. Quarter inch, um, kind of called a bullnose semi-rounded tool. One sixteenth inch flat end mill, eighth inch flat end mill corner rounder. This last code took forever, but 15 minutes. Just putting these beautiful little uh, 1 16th inch grooves across the whole surface. Uh, should look pretty good once it's all put together and done. So right now I'm using an eighth inch end mill to face, face the material down to exactly 0.18 inches thick. Moving at 40 inches per minute, which is pretty quick. Big surprise, made another mistake. You can see here I'm starting to profile around the outside and remember those dowel pins we were talking about? Yeah, sort of got in the way. Didn't see that coming. So of course it trashed my end mill. It started to make all kinds of funky noise so I um, stopped it. Which is a bit of a pain because now I have to restart it again halfway through a code which is tricky but doable um, but now I have to rewrite the code or take out the pins or something so that that doesn't happen again because it's gonna happen again uh, it's gonna happen to this one too and so little tricks but it's two o'clock in the morning and my knife making Tuesday is over uh, I'm almost done with this though just got to profile both sides and corner around them um, so I'll deal with that tomorrow. Uh, I have to finish it now that it's on the machine, oh darn. So I'll finish that up on Wednesday. Alright, so it's Wednesday now, had a good night's sleep. And what I'm going to do to fix this problem is to use longer ones and simply pull them out after it's been clamped down. It's clamped down here, here in the corner, and still right here with a finger clamp. So I don't need these anymore. So now I will be able to profile around the outside and it won't hit here, I know that, and it hopefully won't hit here. Um, we'll see. See, I put a nice radius on all the corners. Notice I only um, I only cut on the profile pass. I only cut down halfway uh, due to various reasons. But uh, so I did my corner rounder. And now I'm going to go back in with the eighth inch end mill and uh, profile the rest of them. And that should be the last step. Here we have it. First set of handles done. As you can see, I left little tabs on them. <clears throat> for um, 
Come on, focus. Just to help with the machining, I forget how thick they are, 60 thou or something. Um, help me hold it down properly while I was machining. It's sort of not a really good way to do it because now I have to break them off by hand, hand file them, and then it's never going to look as smooth as the machined look. Um, it's just a compromise that I did. It's what I get for trying to use the same fixture plate for the handles and the blades. Uh, you got to make compromises and that sucks. So I won't be doing that again, I don't think. It's best to hold it down by the pivot, which I was able to do here, and then by like a lanyard hole in the back or something. Um, these little 440s are a little small. Um, so maybe I'll add a lanyard hole to this one or to future ones or something, just so I can hold it down on the inside of the handle so that I can profile all the way around the outside and not have to deal with these stupid tabs. But they're 0.18 thick. It's almost uh, 3 16 of an inch. Pretty beefy. First prototype button lock today. This is how they fit in my hand. Pretty large. The handle is uh, pretty much exactly 5 inches long. Compared to a Manix, it's a good, I don't know, quarter inch longer. Not a ton longer, I guess. But, enough to notice. But yeah. Surprisingly, it fits the finger grooves alright. Got a little bit sticking out the back, but that's what you get for such a big knife. So we'll see, and um, here's my button lock. Let's see if she fits. Nope. Pretty sure that that smaller pocket in the back is uh, too small. So for the next one, I'll have to make this pocket bigger because see, it's hitting on the big ring of the button. So I got to make that quite a bit bigger. But for this this one, I can use a Dremel or something and open that up. But it pretty sure it does fit there. Yeah, it fits there very nicely. Oops, sorry. It's because I reamed this hole for 6 millimeter. And uh, if I can find them... Got it. So my pivot pin. Yeah, that side fits there. And the other side... It's there. Sweet. Sweetness. Check it out, guys. My first knife. I can just open it up. Cha-ching. Okay, maybe the blade's a little bit small. This is obviously the uh, test blade that I made a few weeks ago. It's the only blade I have at the moment, but... Um, Got my pivots together, ball bearings, using these ball bearings, or roller bearings, I guess they're called, if you're going to focus. Okay, it's not going to focus. You can see though. So I got them together, this thing is butter smooth, and I don't have any standoffs or anything to actually tighten it down, but um, it's pretty smooth. It's tight. Um, I made it nice and tight, so the blade doesn't, you know, move by itself, but it's also very short, not a heavy blade, right? Um, but once I sort of polish up all the surfaces and uh, 
you know, ream the hole in the blade and use lapping compound and all that stuff, it'll be really smooth. So, what do you guys think? Still gotta ground the tabs off, grind the tabs off, but and it should have a four and a bit inch blade. Similar profile to that one. Um, but yeah, I, I quite like how the handle fits in my hand. I like, I like a lot. And uh, just like all my handles, my scales that I make, once I tumble these, then those milling marks, the, uh, the grooves, can, you can see them. The grooves will really show up and the milling pattern that I use to surface it down will uh, disappear. So I'll tumble them for a day or so. Pretty darn happy with that. Wish I had a blade, but the blade will come next. And for the standoffs and stuff, I think I'm going to give up on titanium for now and just make them out of aluminum because that will be easy for me. I won't be breaking taps in aluminum, I'll tell you that much. And um, they'll work fine in aluminum for the prototype. So, there's the uh, engraving. So when it's together, you can kind of probably read it if you go like that. Yeah. There it is, guys. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned next week. We'll do blades. Air compressor. Clip on anodized titanium in bronze color at about 15 volts. So it's Thursday and I thought I would work on this just a little bit more. As you can see I made an aluminum standoff and uh, here I'm on my lathe and we'll make another one. So I'm starting with a uh, half inch round bar, should be quarter inch so you can see I turned it down to quarter. So let's uh, hit go. Tool change. Hit go again. And there it goes. All done. So the sides, the handles have been tumbled for 18 hours, really lets that engraving show. And I got the button installed, works epic. I got some aluminum standoffs made, works epic. Focus, got some really nice screws that go totally flush with the surface um, but they're too long so they butt, butt together if I use two of them hence why these ones have washers to space them out but you know that's what they're gonna look like once I shorten the screws a little bit got the uh, bronze clip on, the titanium clip and I'll, I'll dome this uh, pivot pin it's too long on this side, hence the big washers. I'll dome this one too and that'll be pretty flush. So some finishing work left to do, but holy crap.